Hi, now for today's mission I've been asked to remove this wallpaper off this feature wall here. The customer's a bit bored with it and looking for a change. So the first thing I often do in this situation is to get a scraper and just see if I can pull the front off. And if it's a vinyl paper, quite often you can just tear all the plastic coating off, soak the paper underneath and you get it off very quickly. But this is not a vinyl coated paper. As you can see it's just little bits, nibbly bits are coming off. So I'm going to have to do the traditional method to strip this off. Um, most of these model papers, however, they've got a coating on them to make them washable or scrubbable or spongeable or something so that you can give them a bit of a clean. So if you put the water straight on top of that to strip it, it will just run straight off. So we need something to score up the paper to let the water get underneath to soften up the paste. So what we tend to use these days is one of these things, which we call in the trade a tiger proper name wallpaper perforator. They're about £10 these things are from the decorators merchants. So I'm going to get out of the wrapper. There you go, show what it looks like. So as you can see it's got these little spiky wheels on it. The spin round when it's on the wall and punch of the paper and perforate it. So what you do so you put it on the wall, and you go around in circular motion. As you can see, it makes all these tiny little holes in the wall to allow the water to get through to soften the paste. However, if you haven't got one of these, there is an alternative method which we used to use before those were invented, and that was to get a scraper and to drag it across the wall at an angle like that, one way and then the other, in sort of a cross hatch fashion, to allow the water to get in behind that. So there is an alternative method. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack on and tiger up round the whole wall before I put any water on. Right, well I've tigered up the wall, ready for the next stage. Um, because I'm going to be using water, I've decided to use a plastic back dust sheet to protect the floor. So as you can hear, you can hear that plastic on the back of it. Get these from Decorators Merchants, these particular ones are about £12. If you haven't got one of these, it's a good idea to put some plastic sheet down under your dust sheet anyway, particularly if you've got an expensive carpet. The other thing, which is a bit of a concern, is the sockets on the wall. Because I'm going to be putting water on the wall, I don't really want to blow myself up by getting water in that socket. So before I start the next stage, I'm just going to nip down try and find a consumer unit and turn the power off. Okay, so that's it, I've turned the power off. I've also covered over the sockets with a bit of waterproof duct tape to be on the safe side, so now I'm ready to soak the wall. Now, I prefer to use a flat wall brush when I do it, and in the bucket I've got some hot water with a dash of washing up liquid, which will help it soak through the paper and soften up the paste. So you could use a sponge, but I find that they tend to take off as much water as they put on, so I'm much happier using one of these brushes. But you can use a sponge if you prefer. So, to put the water on the wall, what I tend to do, is, what I don't want to do, is to get loads of water over the floor. So this is the method that I do to ensure I don't. So put some water on the brush, put it on the wall, and do an arcing motion like that, and keeping the bristles on the wall at all times. And don't flop it around like that, it's just going to soak everybody. So once again, like that, little arcing motion, and you get, you do get some on the floor, but it's a minimal amount of water. So I'm going to soak the wall like this. Now what I'm going to do, if you can see, I'm going to soak this section down through here initially, because if I soak it all, it's always going to dry out, so I'm really wasting my time. So for about this wide, about four or five feet, soak that first of all. So I'll be doing that, then I'll let that soak for two or three minutes, and then do it again, let it soak for two or three minutes, and do it once more. So I soak it three times before I try to strip it off, because that way you're letting the water do the work, and the paper will come off a lot easier. So I'm going to crack on and do that now, before I start to scrape it off. Right, well I've given that three soakings now, so hopefully the water has done its job, got through the back and softened the paste up. 
So now I'm ready to strip it off. I'm going to be using a scraper like this, a professional type one with a blade goes right through the handle. Good quality steel. They cost about eight pounds these, but if you've got a lot of work to do, they're a good investment. The thing to do is when you start the scrape, before you start the scrape, just make sure that you have definitely got a scraper with a nice firm blade and not one of these, which is a filling knife with a flexible blade. So just double check, because if you use that, it can be pretty dangerous if it's snapped off. Okay, so I'm going to start on the seam line here. I'll go through there like that. And as you can see, just by waiting around for the water to do its work, how easy it is to take that paper off. And also, I'm not damaging the wall because I've let the water do its work. And I'm keeping the scraper at a low angle too, so it's not going to dig into the wall. It's easy to get the paper off now, so I should have the rest of this off within the next half hour, ready for the next stage. Right, so that's it, all the paper's off the wall now, good job. Now what we're left with on the wall now is the paste which was used to stick the paper on the wall, and that's got to come off now, because if we don't, and we just paint over the wall with emulsion paint, as it dries it'll all crack and fracture, and we've got like a blimmin' great big crocodile skin. So we've got to get that paste off. So what I've done is I've already soaked this part of the wall with some warm, clean water. And I'm going to be using this tool to get the paste off. It's called many names in the industry, like a wide filling knife, wide scraper, etc. But it's quite a handy tool. So I've soaked the wall. So I start at the bottom. I pull the tool up the wall like that. And then push it. To the top of the wall. Now if you look, look at all that paste that's come off. So now all I do is just wipe it off in the bucket with a sponge and do the next strip and work my way across the wall. As easy as that, it always builds up on the sponge. So I'm going to carry on now and just complete the rest of the wall, getting all that horrible nasty paste off. Okay, so that's that. I've finished using that wide scraper to get the paste off. So the last thing I'm going to do now is I've changed the water. I've got some fresh, clean water in the bucket here. The last thing to do now is to give the walls a really good wash down with some nice, clean water. And give it a nice clean, get the last remaining bits of paste off the wall. And then it'll be all ready for decorating. So there we go, all stripped and ready to go.